Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I like to talk about coding. Today's coding segment, we're gonna delve into the world of TypeScript and one of its newest, most exciting, newest feature. I said newest twice, right? Yeah. In TypeScript 4.1, a undersung new feature was added called template literal types. And the world of creativity and possibility that this new feature added to TypeScript is actually astonishing. So I figured I'd take a little of your time today to tell you what is a template literal type and to give you a high level overview about how they work on a basic level. And then we're going to kind of delve into some examples online of people pushing this feature to its limit, uh, the literal limit of this feature with things and typing things that I didn't even know were possible. So kind of seeding you with an idea of like what you can do if you spend all month playing <laughs> with template literal types. Enough gap, enough chatter. Let's get to the chowder. Chowder, what? Uh, and let's start talking about template literal types. Okay. Here we are on the documentation page for template literal types. There's also the blog post from TypeScript 4.1 that talks about template literal types. But for today's video, we're going to stay in the documentation page. I was thinking about making my own examples and kind of showing you what you can do with this. And I read this documentation page and I was so thoroughly impressed by it that I figured I wouldn't really try to do better than it because this documentation page is great. So after you're done watching this video, you can refer to this page. I'll have the same information. They've done a great job explaining this feature. You're not going to get it in video form. Um, a template literal type is similar to, it has the same syntax. This is the thing. This is where it gets its name from as a template literal string in JavaScript. If you're not aware about a template literal string, that's a ES2020 feature or some sort. Essentially, it's a string written with backticks. And one of the exciting features of it is it makes the ability to interpolate variables inside that string easy. Essentially, what you would normally use templating languages like mustache or handlebars for, handlebars for, you can now pretty much do easily built into JavaScript, where if you have some variable, I'm sure there's gonna be an example here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Right, so here is the old way where you just concatenate strings, and here with a string, with a template literal, you can just put it in line. So that's kind of where the uh, idea comes from. And another thing to be aware of is, before you delve into template literal types, is you have to understand string literal types. Bit of a yak shave here because template literal types are a very advanced feature in TypeScript, if I'm being honest. And I am being honest, I think, with you, but not with myself. Ooh. A literal type in TypeScript is the literal value that you're typing. So in TypeScript, you have the types of string and number. Where, let me try this, move this new tab. Um, where if you have let foo string equals Harry. So this is saying that the type of foo is a string, which means that I can reassign foo to equal um, Barry, my evil, evil twin. So this is just a plain string type. It's not really exciting. You've probably dealt with it if you use TypeScript in the past, super common. Instead, what we could do is make a literal type. We can say bar has the literal type of Harry, which is saying that bar, the type of bar is the string of Harry, such that if I were to try to do uh, bar equals my evil twin Barry, TypeScript says, oh, no, 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 evil twin. I know you. You can't assign the type Barry Either this is going to be a string or a literal type of Barry to one that already says Harry. It has to be Harry to make things happy. And that's how I don't get my credit card stolen anymore with TypeScript. So that's the two kind of building blocks for template literal types is the temperate, template literal string from JavaScript and string literal types. So you can kind of combine those two things together where you can make a type 
which in TypeScript, the type is just an alias to something. So the type of world is the literal, the string literal of world. And then using template syntax, you can interpolate that value into here and get the new type of hello world. Uh, it's kind of adding the functionality that you have in JavaScript with template literal strings right into the type systems. You can essentially operate with template types. And what's really cool about template literal strings is that it will expand unions. So the better example I have here is, so here we have email IDs. So the email can be a welcome email or an email heading, and the footer can be footer title or footer send off. And if you wanna actually make, if you're making, you know, a email library, and you wanna say what all the local IDs can be, you can make a union of email and footer and suffix on that interpolation, the ID value, such that when TypeScript evaluates this, it'll expand it to welcome email ID, email heading ID, all of those things for you. You kind of get an idea of like what you can do here. You can kind of just dynamically, which is very strange to stay with TypeScript, which is static typing, but you can dynamically create new static types, which is why it's so crazy to me. This is a similar idea, idea here where you have a union of values of languages, the locale IDs, and it'll expand this to all that for you. What's even more advanced to me is how, and probably more practical, is when you're kind of taking an object and making operations on top of it. So before, this was impossible to do, but now possible with template literal types. So if you wanna have, let's say you're, make, you're trying to make an event emitter on an object, this function that will make an event emitter on the person object such that you can say, when first name changed, the property here, call my callback. Before string literals, uh, template literals, there was no way to actually, uh, that's fine. There was no way to actually type check this first argument. There was really no way to do it. You could just put whatever you want in here and TypeScript would have no way of knowing if it was valid or not. Um, our event emitter function here is saying it needs to have the first name as the key plus changed and no more. So instead what you can do with TypeScript, and this is some fancy work over here, is when you're declaring this function, it takes in a generic, which is just a variable for a type if you've seen my previous videos, that's the easiest way to think about. It takes an argument where the first argument has the shape of whatever the type is. So when, let's actually combine this together. Let's bring this back over here. Okay. So let's see if this section complains. Yes, cool. So this is going to be a working example. Some live coding. It's always scary. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, so this is the watch object. The argument is any arbitrary object, which is why it's an object, a shape of type. We don't really care about typing it. It's just saying that this is a type variable that's being put here. And the return value, this colon says the return value from this function is one that is the shape of type, right? Because it's still gonna be, this person will still let you actually access the properties, it's still gonna be an object that just has more functionally added on top. And then also it's gonna be having the properties of prop event source, such that this on operator, which is here, is being typed as the event name, this first argument is, so here's some interpolation, right? A template literal. It's a string, so it has to be a string because that's the common denominator, and all the keys of type. Now remember, type is a being passed into here. This object is being assigned to type. So when you get all the keys of type, it's taking all the keys of this object here. So first name, last name, age. So this is actually being expanded to first name, last name, age. And then because of how unions are expanded, it's gonna have first name changed, concatenated, last name changed, age concatenated. Such that here, this is all happy, but if I were to just remove change from it, TypeScript will yell because argument of type first name is not assignable to parameter of type first name change, last name changed, age changed. 
So let that sink in for a moment because the ability to dynamically change string literal values with the template literal opens up a whole world of possibility. Dare I say a whole new world. Don't watch this video, Disney. I don't have enough money to be sued by you. Now, what's even cooler is you can do inference. Now, this is where my mind starts to melt because this is some real fancy TypeScript. Let's open up this example. So this is the same thing that we had before, right? Um, if you remember before, the value of new value is being typed as any because in this callback, we're just saying any, like we're not really being that fancy with ourselves, but we can be here. You can kind of see the difference, things changing a little bit. This callback is saying the val the new value, because this is the argument, the first argument being given to the, to the callback. So this type, remember, is here. So the type is the object itself. And then the key is being defined on here. It's a new generic on the on function. So this is doing some inferment. This is, this is, if you would, if you were to ask me how to write this, I wouldn't know how, but I can read it. So hopefully that helps you kind of get half the battle here. You know, I always have to look it up for inferment. It's a very fancy feature for me. So I don't really know exactly how to do it, but this is a new generic variable key that has to be a string and all the keys of type. So the keys of type, remember again, are all of these, so all the keys is first name, last name. So key is a string and all these keys, which means that when you actually do this interpolated value here, you're saying, take those values, first name, last name, age, and get the value from the object here. So it's saying type key. So let's say this is gonna be um, first name. So first name is the key on type on this object. So first name on this object is gonna be Circe, which is gonna be a string. So here, this is being typed as string. Age is gonna be typed as a number. So it's inferring based on the argument to the, fir the first value to the first argument, it'll infer what type the second one will be, which is wild, really cool. Uh, what else is on this page? Then there's also some fun um, built-in string manipulation types, uh, which these actually made me laugh. I mean, these are helpful. There's uppercase, so you can convert each character in the string to uppercase. So great, hello world. Uh, lowercase, all lowercase. When I actually looked up in the code base how all these are implemented, um, I saw that they were typed with this intrinsic value, value, uh, value, which is a little bit of magic. When you actually go down here uh, in the documentation, you can say that uh, these types are built into the compiler for performance and can't be found in the files included with TypeScript. And you actually go to the bottom and you can see the technical details on how these are being implemented. And it's just some nice, simple switch statements with some string manipulation. So that's just what these are. Kind of helpful for you to dynamically create new string literal values in your TypeScript applications. Now let's get advanced. Now this part is where your dreams can become reality. This is a curated list of awesome template literal type examples. Some more useful than others, but some super useful and some that I wish I had 10 years ago before TypeScript even existed. Weird. The first one is dot notation string type safe. So if you've ever use underscore lodash and use their get operator where you can dynamically construct the path like if you have some object here that's deeply nested you can dynamically reference values inside of it so you do uh project uh no we're just do object we do first name yeah first name so this is going to say that on this object get me the value for the property on first name and where it becomes really valuable is when you actually want to delve deeply in. This is useful if you have some UI that you're dynamically showing values from a deeply nested JSON object. And before you couldn't really type this, it was just going to be a string and that's all you could do. But now due to the powers of template literals, it can actually read the object being passed in and dynamically construct the entire 
uh, paths that are valid. So here I can actually be helped by IntelliSense because it understands the object to actually pull in projects, the first one in the array, the name value. I can't say foo because it TypeScript knows that doesn't exist. And when you look at the actual implementation here, uh, it's this. And I'm not even going to pretend to try to read that with you because that's going to be a very long video of itself, but something that's possible with this feature. Another thing very cool is document be, typing document query selector. If you're unfamiliar, this is kind of like the jQuery um, lookup, but this will actually tell you the type of the object that you're fetching based upon the strings. So here, because it knows this is an anchor, this knows that this is gonna be an anchor element. This is a input or a div. It knows this could be an input element or a div. You'll get the code to do that. And somebody knows TypeScript much better than me. Um, this is also super useful, router param parsing, such that, I was looking at the examples because they're alive. If you have some param like this, where is this? Um, where is the example? Ah, so handle get is parsing this the path. This params object knows that there's one param of post ID, which is string. And this has post ID and comment, and it knows both of those things are valid. And before template literals, not possible to type. This one could actually probably be um, read. There's some inferment going on with extends and infer. Um, some conditionals depending upon what the type is, but it's parsing the actual string path and extracting the parameters for you to make it type safe. So there's never an issue of you doing post LD by mistake. And it knows that it doesn't exist. Very cool. Expression parser to actually parse JavaScript expressions, which is cool, but not helpful. JSON parsers similarly. This thing is ridiculous. This is a SQL database implemented purely in TypeScript type annotations, where you have some JS object that's implementing a type, and you have the type of that object, and then you can actually query types from there and get the values back. Like, who even thinks that you can do these things? CSS parser, so here's some CSS string, and it'll know that the body needs to have max width because that's what was defined up here. Uh, what else is in here? I think that was the most ones that were most cool. Yeah, so that's kind of like to seed those examples into your mind. Okay, and that was kind of a intermediate tour of TypeScript template literal types, a feature that I myself have not used in my day-to-day -day coding, but one that is useful to be aware about in case you see yourself having a need that is only fit by this feature. There are some things that you can only do with TypeScript template literal types, and the fact that this feature now exists opened those doors to you. So. I'm curious if you have used it in your day job. Let me know in the comments. I'd be very curious to hear what pragmatic, concrete examples you've had rather than just writing a JSON parser for the fun of it, which is definitely fun. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a subscribe and tell all your friends and plant friends because I don't have enough plant subscribers on this channel. I need to get those numbers back up. So subscribe if you aren't already and I'll catch you again in the next video. Stay happy, stay coding.